So the other day I was on a Zoom call with my friend Alex. At the end of the call, we started talking about large language models like Olama and how you can run these super impressive AI models locally on your own hardware. No cloud, no sending your data off to some remote server, just sitting right here on my Mac Studio with the M1 chip. So welcome aboard the Digital Voyage and stick around for a little bit of Under the Hood. Now, quick backstory. Alex and I go way back. He was actually my student years ago when I was still teaching, and now he's working in IT. And funny enough, these days I find myself turning to him for tech advice, and it was Alex who really turned me on to this whole world of running LLM, LLMs locally. <laughs> say that three times fast. So today we thought we'd do a little demo to show you how powerful this thing is. So I recorded the call and I've condensed it down to the most interesting parts of getting this model. It's running completely offline on my own machine. It's pretty wild what's possible now with local hardware and some open source tools. So before we jump into the setup and demo, let's just talk for a second about why you'd even want to run one of these large language models locally. Got it that time. First off, privacy. When you're using something like ChatGPT online or any other cloud-based AI tool, every word you type is getting sent off to some server somewhere. Even if you're not sharing sensitive info, it's still nice to know that your data isn't going anywhere but your own machine. Running it locally means total control over what you're putting in and what's staying out. Then there's speed and availability. When it's running right here on my Mac Studio, there's no waiting for some remote server to respond. It's just instant feedback and there's no downtime if the service goes down or my internet connection is flaky. No API limits, no subscription fees. It's just always available. Another big one is customization. When you're running models locally, you can actually swap in different models depending on what you need. Maybe you want something super lightweight that just handles simple text generation, or maybe you want something more advanced that can summarize long documents or help you write code. You can curate exactly what you're running and even fine tune things over time. And finally, honestly, it's just cool. Like the fact that we're at this point where these massive, powerful language models that used to require server farms are now available to run on a desktop computer. That's just wild. And if you're into tech, it's fun to mess around with the settings, test different models, see how far you can push your own hardware. So yeah, that's kind of what got me hooked. Alex showed me how easy it is to get it up and running on my Mac. And now I've got this new tool set living right here on my machine. So. Let's see how it works and you can follow along and do it on your own Mac or PC. All right, I'm gonna go to Olama and then I downloaded it from Mac OS. Yep. Here, I am going to install it and, and run it. And it is coming up any second now. It's an application I downloaded from the internet. Sure, oh wow, I've never seen that before. Move to applications. Yeah, are you using uh, like Sonoma? Yeah, the late whatever this yeah. is, the latest. Uh, Sequoia. Sequoia, mm -hmm. that's right. Sonoma was and Sonoma's Sonoma command was. line. Yes. Run this command in your terminal. Yes, will do. So it's pulling. A manifest of two gigabytes. Yeah. Go success. Send message. Okay. Hello. Um, what do you know about the weather in Santa Barbara? It's not going to answer because you don't have a model installed yet. Oh, all right. Well, maybe, maybe it gives you a model. Oh. Yeah. So it gives you some baseline model. That's nuts. Okay. But but then you can say like. Uh, you can tell it to install a specific model. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the Olama docs page, okay. for example, if you go to olama.com slash library slash deep seek dash R1, second thing down on the left. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, you can see, so like 
scroll down under models and you're going to want the distilled models because if you try to run the 671 billion parameter one on your mac it's going to blow up okay but try like 8b i, I think know. that's yeah so now so i think you want to type by in there b-y-e or control c maybe all right let's see how about let's see help uh oh it's slash by nah sorry okay so then paste that in there mm -hmm. so now it's going to download that model so it's about five gigs so it's going to take a little while mm -hmm. now why did you pick 8b versus 1.5b or 14b so the good rule of thumb is uh and there's things that change this because like they can like they'll have quantized models which reduces this plays with this estimate but basically uh take the billion and change it to gigabytes of ram and that's what you need to run it okay so you could probably run 14 you might even be able to get away with 32 because you can probably put some of it in swap um mm -hmm. but if you try to run 671 it's going to fill up your ram and then like if you're on Linux, I don't know, Mac probably has something that'll prevent this, but like if you're on a Linux machine, it'll start filling up your swap with 671 gigabytes of model. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And your whole computer grinds to a halt. <laughs> and then you need to like reformat. Yeah, um, I think you can get by with a reboot, but like, yeah, your computer is going to be mad at you. Mm -hmm. But I went with 8B because like I didn't know what else you had running and it seemed like a safe number. Okay, yeah. If you go with like 1.5b, like the model is going to be kind of dumb. Yeah. But it like, but on the flip side, it runs on a Raspberry Pi, so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Write me a poem about the weather in Santa Barbara. Wow. This is pretty wild that this is all yeah. happening locally. Yeah. And like, what did that take us? Like seven minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Like, that's not even a problem. Like, the Plex server was so much harder than this, Levi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And actually, that's like, I think the Macs are, have a really compelling use case right now, specifically with LLMs. So the thing about LLMs is they can run with CPU and they can run with like RAM, but where they really shine is when you can use a graphics card. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to get like, you get like an RTX 4090 that costs like used maybe eight, 900 bucks and it has 24 gigs of VRAM. The Mac, Stu like the Mac Studio and all the Macs, they have shared memory. So that memory can be used either for your CPU or for your GPU or for like the neural engine, right? Mm -hmm. So you can actually acquire a ton of the right type of memory really affordably on a Mac right now. Um, like the new, uh, the newest Mac Studio, like the M3 Ultra Mac Studio that like just announced it's on pre-order right now. Mm -hmm. You can, um, you can get that configured with 512 gigabytes of unified system memory and it costs a fortune it's like ten thousand dollars but if you wanted to do that on any other hardware platform it would cost you more than ten thousand dollars because mm -hmm. you would need 512 divided by 24 that's what you would need number of nvidia gpus plus a motherboard that can run it plus a power supply that can power it mm -hmm. So it kind of shows you, it's a little different than ChatGPT. It kind of shows you all of its thinking. Yeah. And you can play with it. Like you can give it instructions to like change the verbosity of it, you know? Yeah. Um, this feels like a little annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like you asked it to write you a poem and it like gave you a treatise on what it means to write a poem. Um, well, it's interesting because it gives you some insight into... how it works 
did it make it up or yeah it doesn't it's it doesn't seem to have any data about pathways to invention but it's like in summary pathways to invention is an educational film on pbs that traces the evolution of invention celebrating the contributions of visionaries while inspiring innovative thinking for tomorrow's challenges i mean it's all very generic yeah but also it's not bad it's not bad try a uh, chatbox ai dot app it gives you a native mac application i've never used it before but people seem to like it and it's free allow this is just a front end yeah but you can also do stuff with it like pipe in documents you can tie in um my own API local model, uh, Olama API. Oh, you probably have to choose a model. Keep going. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So give it a model. <laughs> oh my God. It's so oh my sad. God. It's almost as neurotic as I am. <laughs> oh, shoot. How do I respond? Oh, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. But do you see, like, yeah. it's giving you the thinking? And I think, like, that's the context you're not getting from the terminal because it's just combining it. Yeah. Like, that answer of, that answer of, like, hello, how can I assist you today is not a stupid answer. Right. And so from within here, you could probably do this all through a llama through the CLI, but, like, why? I think with, like, the sliders or something, you see that little slider icon to the right down in that icon bar? Yeah. You know, here's where. Yeah, I got to look up what these mean. Yeah. At this point, it was getting late. We had it running and we figured we got a taste of running a local large language model. But if you have some experience with some of the many models available, tell me about them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you've been doing with AI. And with that, I'm Levi and I'll see you again for another Digital Voyage. Digital Voyage.